Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about monitoring your video out of your camera and I've got a great piece of equipment today. It's the Timbercod DC80 field monitor. 1920 by 1200. It also ex accepts all 4K inputs and any other type of input, standard definition, high definition, full definition, 16 by 9 and 4 by 3. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, why you want to use an on-camera field monitor and some of the features that this monitor has to offer. First, let's talk about why do I need a field monitor? Well, most cameras like this Canon camera and other Canons, they only come with like a three and a half inch uh, monitor, which can be hard to tell for exposure and focusing and colors. So a lot of times when you're looking at a three inch monitor on something like a DSLR camera and you go in there and you think, oh, I'm, I'm in focus, but you take your footage back to the editing room and you find out, oh, I'm just slightly out of focus. That's why you really want to use a great field monitor. This field monitor is fantastic, as you can see. You can really dial that, that image in. You know, you're in perfect focus, no question about it. So adding this piece of equipment can really bring your videos to life. It can help you become more professional, even if you're shooting low budget videos. You can order this on Viltrox website. It's about $150. Uh, which is a fantastic price point for a 7-inch field monitor. Now this is a HDMI field monitor. It does not support SDI. Uh, it is, again, a 7-inch 4K TFT monitor. So first off, on your inputs here, you have your USB input to update the firmware. You have your HDMI out and you have your HDMI in and your DC plug in. Now this is an internal battery, lithium ion battery. Uh, that's this port here charges the internal battery. What you can also do is plug this up to a V mount battery on your camera and run power from that. So if you get low on internal battery power, or even after time, you know, with all lithium ion batteries, eventually they don't hold a charge anymore. So if you've really used the expected life on this monitor and you want to keep using it, you have a, a DC input option to use batteries to keep powering this forever. Um, on the bottom here, we have the AV input, audio video input and headphone input if you want to monitor your audio from your camera. You also have an external speaker, which I don't know why you would use that if you're filmmaking, you don't want to be having an external speaker working, but it is a added option for an external speaker. You also get quarter 20 input, so you, with this monitor, you really only have two input options here for a quarter 20 adapter to put to your camera rig, shoulder rig, or mount to your tripod. But it does give you a little extra added feature with it not just being one on the bottom, but one, one on the side here. Next, on the top, this is your menu, and this is your selector for your menu. We have your power button and your function keys. These are function presets, so you can go through the menu and set your presets to like focus peaking or histogram or anything like that. And you have a quick reference to turn your peaking on and off if you desire. Over here is just a, a basic uh, back button for your menu options. So let's talk about some of the things that this monitor does come with in the box. First off, you get a nice little protector for your monitor. And this, this bag, you can also clean the screen, which is a nice little added feature. Help protect your monitor, keep scratches off of it. You get your magic arm with multiple different types of hot shoe adapters. You can take this little piece here, go quarter 20, 
slide that right onto your hot shoe there. Or if you have a camera cage, camera rigs, anything like that, you can put that into the cage there, put your monitor up on top here, or you have another hot shoe adapter here. So this gives you quite a bit of pieces in the box for you to, to do different types of mounting styles with your monitor. Uh, a lot of monitors are not gonna come with this little, this magic arm. You're gonna have to go out of your pocket and pay more. It's quite amazing that this monitor at its price point includes something like this. They also send you HDMI cables. This is uh, micro and mini HDMI. So if you have a smaller camera like this Canon M50, or if you're using DSLR bigger cameras, uh, 60D, 5D, anything like that, 70D, 80D, 7Ds, anything like that will take this, uh, this mi micro HDMI and then a lot of your mirror, mirrorless cameras, your, your Sonys and things like that will take the, the smaller HDMI input. Also give you your, your charging adapter here that takes DC input there, which is pretty standard to Edison input here, pretty standard. It also gives you the ability to take this Edison off and if you go out of the country, you need to 220 or something like that, then you can change that adapter real quick and then you can do 220. Um, it's a nice little feature if you're traveling all over the world shooting video. So we're gonna plug this up and we're gonna turn this monitor on. I'll hook it up to another camera and we can see some of the different features that this monitor has to offer. Okay, we can see our little friend Tuku. It's from a movie that I worked on few years ago and it never never went to theater right off I have my uh, focus peaking on you got your false color this will help you with your exposure uh, you can see I'm a little overexposed from the lighting in the background but that's okay it's just that one little spot false color off so on my next function, we have the peaking. I've already got my function preset set and you can turn your peaking all the way up and you can see how red it is. I'll give you a little look there. That's out of focus. That's completely in focus. You get your red and your green so you know everything is sharp. That's the beauty of having a field monitor. So you're not looking at a tiny screen and you can really get your focus dialed in perfectly. So you can see the green. Um, my camera is a video camera that already has peaking presets inside it. Also, with what's great, like this video camera, it shows you everything that you need. You've got, you got your frames per second, you have your, your shutter, you have your aperture, you have your time code, your ISO, your white balance, and it also displays your battery. Now this is volume levels here, but that's coming from my camera image. And then you also have on the monitor, it has its own volume levels here. Um, this is monitor volume. This is camera. This is showing me what's going on in my camera. Um, these, this automatically pops up with my camera image, but these levels over here are from the monitor. So you, if, if you're shooting a DSLR, you may not have these levels. So the great thing about this is as long as your DSLR does HDMI audio out, you can monitor your audio here. A lot of DSLR cameras are not gonna give you this on the display it's going to be in your settings so you'll have to go to your settings put your volume and then guess because you won't be able to monitor your volume on on the display so the great thing about this monitor is you're able to visualize your settings and make sure your levels are doing great just to kind of give you an idea of what a a 4k camera would look like there you go, I've, I've turned the, the peaking on in the monitor, not on the camera. 
and again you can see there are no audio levels here uh, we have to switch the audio levels on so we switch our audio levels on here and now you can see here now you have your audio bar which you can monitor your audio I don't think the audio is turned on this camera so or this camera does not output audio levels on the HDMI, so you're not able to monitor the levels here. This is a lower version of a, a Canon, so, but I just wanted you to see the difference between uh, full HD and 4K images on this monitor. And there you go. You can see that this inputs UHD 4K image and displays on this monitor without any issue. Now we'll go back to the regular video camera and see what kind of image we get on just a regular full HD camera. So we'll run through some of the, the features here. Up here is your menu button. Now you have uh, picture settings and picture mode. You know, I stick with standard, but if you wanna change your, your picture mode, you just select it. Now your user, your vi user is like custom settings if you wanna go in there and do whatever you want, however you wanna set your image up. You got vivid, you got standard, and you got soft. Uh, I usually just stick with standard, gives me a nice, nice color. Uh, these are all just what user settings if you want to tone down the reds or the greens or anything like that, or you know, change the backlight of the monitor and things like that. Next function, these are your really important functions. This is your your peaking and everything you can set to your presets up here so as you can see i've got my peaking my uh, peaking color my false color i got my peaking color set to red so you can tell the difference of what my camera's giving me and what my monitor's giving me false color exposure monochrome aspect ratio picks to picks scan mode and then you can flip horizontal or flip vertical if you want to set your camera upside down you got your freeze your zoom to really check your focus if you want to zoom in you can zoom in right straight to the eyes and then see make sure that you're perfectly in focus a lot of monitors won't zoom in that far This is really to check your, your focus and make sure that you are in focus where you want to be. Next you have your marks, that's your border, your frame edges, and your center mark. So if you want to have a center crosshair, you can turn that on and off. Uh, and then you have different colors, just, just multiple different settings, however you want to set your monitor off. If you want these, you, you want your frame edges to be green or if you want them to be white you can go in there and turn that off next we have the great feature of your waveforms so you got your volume bar on off i'll show you that off took away the sound settings and your levels there so you don't see your levels anymore uh, if you wanted to do it like uh, if you have a video camera like mine and you want to just check the levels on your video camera itself then you can do that and you don't have to have the the um the levels over here you only have one set of levels since my camera does have levels I'm going to leave that off next you have your histogram we'll turn that on that's your whites and your blacks off on next you have your RGB histogram this tells you your color difference I'll show you that wave shows you where your colors are high high on the blue high on the red high on the green Next, you have your vector scope. 
This is also just telling you where your colors are and where your highlights and your darks are. And next you have your RGB waveform here. Same thing, just telling you what colors are, where you're peaking in certain colors, or if you've got even color match. You also do YUV, YCBCR, or off. I usually stick with like just one waveform, a histogram or something like that would be enough. If you want a vector, that's okay. It depends on how in depth you are doing your lighting and things like that. You want to see the different colors. You also want to see that your reds aren't peaking too hot and going to bleed. And then next up we have our function. This is where you can set your functions up. So you have function one, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four functions. And you can set those to whatever you really want to use. False color, peaking, center mark, if you want to change that screen mark, screen mode, flip, freeze, camera mode, mute, exposure. Set that to exposure. We can set this one up. Let's say you want this to be your, your waveform your histogram volume bar RGB histogram you want that next up next up is your menu settings this is just standard menu settings of your volume your input source your language if you want to reset if you want to do the software update you want your battery on or off uh, just basic settings for any kind of device really but we've really run through the great important features of this camera is setting setting up your your presets you know with your false colors your your peaking um, here's my exposure you see them a little hot in certain places there with the reds and then your waveforms you know if you want to change those on and off and usually I stick with with these type of settings, peaking being my number one, my exposure. Uh, I always leave my histogram on here. Um, I do have a histogram on my camera too, which you'll, you'll see here. That's not coming from the monitor, that's coming from the camera. So sometimes, you know, you, you, depending on what you're using, DSLRs are gonna show you all this. So uh, it depends on what you use. If you have a camera like mine that already has a histogram, then you wouldn't really need to, to have your histogram on here. As you can see, the menu buttons, it's really easy to use the function of these buttons. You're in and out of the menu as quickly as possible if you have to make certain adjustments very quickly. I'm really quite impressed with, with the image that you get out of this monitor and all the professional functions you get out of this monitor. Another thing that's really impressive about this monitor is you have this pass-through HDMI out. So if you wanted to go to a larger monitor or 21 inch, you want your clients to be able to see a monitor and it's not just this little seven inch, you can go out to a 20 some inch monitor or bigger and show your clients the exact image that you're seeing and then turn off all the functions if you wanted to so they're not seeing all this crazy stuff that doesn't really make any sense to them. So go ahead and go to Viltrox.com. I'll put that link in my description below and you can order this monitor from them. I suggest just going ahead and ordering from them instead of going through a secondary person where you may not find it on Amazon or anything like that. But the description will be in the link below what monitor this is and I'll try to put the price point up there for you and the website you can go and order this on. I'll put a direct link so you click on that link 
and it'll take you right to this monitor page and you can order right from there. Again, thanks for watching. We'll talk more in the future about documentary filmmaking and budget filmmaking and some of the best equipment that is being made out there today. So you don't have to spend a whole lot of money trying to make your short films and documentary films. You can get by on small cameras, great lenses, at a budget, so you don't have to go out and spend millions of dollars like Hollywood does.